<clears throat> so today on Bearded Martha Stewart, I want to show everybody how to make a nice instrument, one string jobber. I think it plays pretty cool. Out of starting with a three foot baluster stock from Home Depot. It's a redwood. Alright, and a can. I need my can. Boom. That's our can for today. So, first we want to measure, give or take, how big the can is. You can use a soda can, soup can, whatever you want, whatever can you fancy. Okay, so this can is at the lip, a little over seven and a half inches. We'll go eight inches, just to give ourselves a little bit on the bottom. Alrighty. So we're gonna mark whoop, eight inches from the bottom. And then we're gonna also mark our scale length. I use a 20 inch scale length. So I'm gonna mark that as well. Up here. Now I don't want my end to be particularly too long, so I'm going to take off about I'm only gonna leave about six inches on this side. So from the original slack, well actually I'll take off. I'll leave five and a half so I did on the other one. So on this stock over here. Now, <clears throat> going back to the 8 inch mark, that's actually going to be where our uh, bridge should be. So now we have to measure because the soda can has a bit of a lip and I'm going to use the top as the bridge. I need to measure the, the inside. And this can be very approximate because if you're playing on your own, it doesn't matter. You're not singing up with anybody. And this is about an eighth of an inch. So I'm actually going to have to take off another eighth of an inch so that everything sounds beautiful. So I'm going to mark that eight and a quarter inch. Okay. Now I want to mark, I want to leave about a half of an inch of stock below the can, where the can's going. And much like I did on this other one, I'm going to curve down to about a half inch or so for where the tutor goes. Even marking it by eye. So that gives me, I need a cut. Now, cut this much off. Where's that mark? I can barely see it. Okay. And I'm cutting this off. And I want to do that off camera. I'm just going to use a jigsaw for that. Okay, actually, I, I need to make a slight correction there with what I just said. You know, go back on this do stock. So here I marked it at, at 8. And then eight and a quarter, I will take all of that off. And then over here, marks of 28 is zero fret. That's like your nut. So I'm going to need to cut only up to here. I want this little bit here because I'm going to put the a nail here for the nut. And I need this to kind of be a lead in to somebody over. You'll see how that works. But So I only want to curve out. So I'm going to take out a curve from this point to out and cut off any excess I want. And then on this side, camera I cut straight down and then leave about an eighth of an inch, which is approximately what I did here. I need to maybe straighten that out a little bit, but okay, whatever. And there's that way. Now with our piece cut, I actually had to work on two of them. This one I didn't quite get the curve on the top, but over here right. So, so we have, we have, we have, we have the, mark, the original mark that was 8 inches here. So from the 8 inch mark to the 28 inch mark is 20 inches. That's your zero frame. 
Then you leave this extra little bit, and we're going to notch into that. And we have to drill the tuner. You can use all kinds of things for tuners. You can go to the store, get a ukulele style tuner, or a guitar style tuner, or use a bolt, use a screw, use whatever you got going on. There's all sorts of things like that. I actually have a whatever project is left over. Guitar style tuners. This one happens to be yeah, not the side I thought it was. So unless I flip it around, this will actually go on this outside. But hey. So I need to drill a hole for this. And then sand it all smooth and then stain it. So let's get started with that. So I need to drill one hole for the tuner. I want the string. I want the string to basically be in the middle. So the tuner peg is gonna be off center. And that of course is the secret of life right there. Okay, okay. Yeah, I want the guitar, I want the gear underneath that. The string extension stuff. So this is gonna go within about an inch of the end. Give your take. And I want to drill off center towards the towards the side that the tuner's gonna be on. So that's the way the string's gonna wrap around. Yeah, like I said, just kind of approximately. You can do it exact as you want. It's used to get done. So let's just check our fit. Check everything else is cool. Uh, my hole isn't as straight as I would like. Is it as big as I need? It's as big as I need, but it's straight as I like it. Uh, I need to widen it up a bit. Now, if this had been a ukulele style tuner, this might be a problem trying to widen the hole and straighten it out. You gotta get those the first time. Alright, so. Slap this on just to check it out. And yeah. My tuner actually hang a little bit off the end. But hey. I'm gonna make my judgment call if I like that or not. I guess we're gonna make another hole for the now. I think I will. This one's gonna have a this one's gonna have a hole to hang on, to hang it on the wall. Why not? This is the, the Bob Ross approach to instrument building. There are no mistakes. Happy to left. Oh, you put the wood through for gold, obviously. Anyway. Uh, 
I think it's sandpaper. I bought it. I don't know if it was the dollar store or what. I think it's falling apart on me. We don't want to stay in there. Do this up real quick. You, you, you have a Jones to play a special song in a hug or something. Go for it. You don't have to stay nothing. Uh, I don't care. Now, I'm going to mix up some, some stain here. I've made, I made tea. Ordinary Lipton style tea bags. I just brewed a whole bunch of them way back when. Right? So, this is really concentrated stuff. And, so, it's really concentrated stuff. That's why I, I kind of like using this stuff. I don't, I don't actually believe it all out. I want to make a thin stain, like I did for my green one. Except my can is red this time, so I can use red. This is this is children's uh, washable paint, Crayola brand. Actually, it was you know on sale at Wally World, that marked place that. <sighs> It got noisy out here and my phone actually died. So, a little bit of a switcheroo here. Instead of showing you the red, I'll show you a blue one that I also have to make. So, this is my other piece of wood that I was working on with. Now, we marked off our 20 inch line here for the nut. I'm going to do more of a zero fret type thing, so I'm going to take my file just a bit before that and like I said, draw it in the middle. That's my string path. I just want to make a notch, a nice triangular notch. So this is where the string is going to come up, kind of catch into that, and then it's going to go on to the nail, where whatever piece of wire I'll use for that nut there. Okay, now the stain. That says, well, this is just however many tea bags. It was, I think, eight ounces of water in like 16 tea bags or something crazy. I did it some months ago, well, weeks ago. And I did have one go moldy on me, so I took, you know, if you want, don't want to use, leave this stuff sitting around. It's just, that's how that happened. All right, I don't need all of this fluid though. See, the thing is, I don't need a lot. Even with the red, I mixed up a bit too much. So on its own, this makes a pretty good stain, but I happen to have a blue can. I need to make two of these for family. Send them out. So I have a, a little bit of that. And I'm just gonna add add some of this. It's a children's washable Crayola paint, whatever, just a, a splotch or two to start. And naturally, I left my paintbrush inside. One uh, moment, though, or not? Maybe. Oh, 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 there we go. Okay. So, what am I doing? Harold, 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 you don't think ahead. Making how-to videos where you don't even remember how you did everything. All right. So, just that little bit of paint additive. I don't know. I think the, the tea adds a little something to it. It certainly gets into the wood. It, it does what I like it to do, and tea doesn't cost much. So, if it was just enough to dilute it with water, go ahead and try it. Experiment. 
So, just for uh, comparison, say, before I get started with this, I did red, and this is almost dry. Got kind of a splotchy kind of look to it. So, over it, but I'm not worry about it. There's another step to my staining process, but that. That is a nice color. That would work for me. There's not real expectations. This, this is just so that uh, my, my in-laws can play along with my son on his. He's got a, a one I built with Batman on it a long while ago. It's a little bit of a different construction method. This is a simplified construction method. They still will sound beautiful. It's just a little bit more planned out. No, oh, my set's falling apart. Yeah. Oh, so much for the glare. So. Just taking that diluted, diluted uh, paint there, using it as a stain. As basically a water-based stain it is you know washable water-based children's paint craft paint I don't know why they call it children's paint you're not gonna paint your kit right I mean all the jokes about people being different colors and all I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, so so red obviously will look like a certain way and then when it's all said and done the next step will bring out a lot of green. Next step is uh, actually to go back over it with teak oil. And that will bring out so much green. It brings back so much of of the color of the wood of that of those browns and other earth tones. So this more or less is almost like a, almost like a distressing thing. I mean, the end result is like it looks like it, paint, it was painted and then the paint kind of just faded and chipped off or whatever. You're left with. Like just this glimmer of what was left from the paint after all those years. You know, that's what I think about it anyway. That's what it looks like to me. But I like that look. Alright. Make my life easier. Switch from what we are doing this. Ah. Progress. Alright, so. Just has to be a real quick brush. Now, obviously, green. Green and blue are, are cool colors compared to the red. So the red, you know, goes on, it matches in with the wood, it does all kinds of crazy things. Brown, a brown would do something similar. It would just kind of accentuate in with the wood. It would well, it can almost look like it's painted or just, just very bright and brilliant. Whereas the blues, the cooler colors, the blues, the greens are going to catch into certain parts with the green and highlight those and then even especially after the teak oil will recede and almost beyond non-existent so you get this this multi-toned look all right okay need to mix up a little bit more which is just fine now, i'm not too worried about evening up the coats here and especially at this stage but certainly uh, if you were worried about such a thing just kind of go over it just with everything and it'll mesh up it'll all smooth out especially if you come back at it half an hour or so and with a paper towel or what have you and take off the excess stain and then you can spot it out better and maybe smooth it out a bit. So, so don't clean your brush off right away if that's what you're worried about. Don't worry about getting it all completely evened out. You know, that's, that's just the taste, that's the flavor. You know? If it's a quick and dirty instrument, it's a quick and dirty instrument. You, know, you want a rustic feel, you want a rustic feel. You gotta make 20 of these things. You know, because you gotta craft fair coming up, no, that's what you got going on, no, you adjust to the situation, you adjust to what you like, you know, 
that's all it is in life anyway. This is a do-it-yourself type of deal. So, yeah. How about that? Pretty good on there. Well, catching these last bits. You can see, you know, this video is going to be almost real time except I turned the camera off during the cutting because, well, I wasn't sure I'm getting sawdust all over my phone, honestly. That, that was the other thing. And especially in something like here, on this end green, where it's, it's not too straight or anything. Yeah, I think the camera will catch that. So I just want to fill that in. I want I want this wood to be somewhat protected, and I want this to piece to last. And, you know, I already know it's going to play well and stuff. I've made it, you know, this is, I made the one test case for this stuff the other day and I made that Batman one so long ago. Like, it's a fairly simple idea. It's hard to mess up the tone quality or anything. You know, there's nothing to do it. Nature did its work. Well, Mother Nature grew the dang, dang tree and it got cut down and everything. You know, you know, people made the cans and stuff. And you're just putting it together. here. So, the trick is all in the assembly and presentation so much, you know. So, yeah. And like I said, getting it, I think it's especially important on the bottom end here. Below the, where the can would go. And that way, people are going to dig that into the floor, the dirt, whatever they got. And, you know, you, you just don't want this picking up anything rotting out or whatever but you know it's it's cheap to remake but hey you know be fun this, if your great grandkid comes up to you on your deathbed playing one you made 50, 50 years ago 60 years ago however old you are however old they are you know so okay all right well yeah that looks good i do I do already see going back on this in about half an hour to even out the coat a bit, even as I'm holding it and rotating it and stuff and I'm getting it on my hands, I can see where it's picking up some extra and not picking up so much, so, but, but yeah, even at this stage, you see the nice multi-faceted, you know, look to it not just painted blue that would that would be colorful and certainly could be interesting and you know depending on your audience depending on what you want depending on who's it for even spray painting this thing bright pink might be what you need to do you know? it's not really going to affect the tone the tone is all going to be really out of the resonator out of the can and the can is going to be attached to the wood so you're gonna get the vibrations with a little bit of paint you know this isn't overly sensitive to a, a layer or two of paint i mean if you cake the paint maybe we can have a difference i don't know i don't have that much paint on hand and or the will to put a half inch thick paint on anything it just seems wrong okay so and uh so that's where i'm at with this uh, about a half hour or so I'm going to come back at it and I'm just going to take a paper towel and I'm I'm just going to go at it until it looks about even and stuff stops coming off of it and then All right, next step I have my red one see and I have the blue one which I did go back over and that's what it looks like now. Okay. now I'm going to take some peak oil Give it a nice, yeah, thinnish even coat. Basically, I'm just gonna let the piece absorb what it wants. But it's probably not gonna absorb as much as you might think because it already has that bit of stain in there already. Mm -hmm. 
guess this can be done the same kind of deal. I'll come back at it in one half an hour and wipe it down with a paper towel just to smooth it out. Or add a little bit here and there if you need to. Or finish it. Finish the piece of wood or don't finish the piece of wood or whatever you want. Now, following this, this is dry. Doing it this way, this is going to be ready tomorrow. I'll probably get to it. It'll take about six hours, I think. For the... You need to let it go for a couple hours. At least I usually do six hours at least. So I'll just do it now and go about my evening and go back tomorrow morning to, to finish this guy up. Finish this guy up. So, fresh from the stain. Oh, I'll get the end here. Just double check it. So what it if you're not sure if you got it and will absorb a lot so oh, I can't even you know we'll do that right there. okay so see we're bringing some of that browns back amidst the thing that's the blue I'm not expecting so much of the grain to come back. It was a redwood after all, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. I just expect it to look nice. That's all I really need of it. A little, a little protection, a little interest. No. It's a nice primary color. I'm sure my son will like this. No. His, his great grandparents certainly will. I'm sure. I don't like looking at it, if nothing else. I don't know. Um, we'll see what they play. Kind of important thing there. Be in the shot, that's your problem. I'll just cut it out, it's beer. Right? Yeah, not that big a deal. Oh, 
we'll see. Alright, well, let's see that. In about yeah, half an hour or so, an hour. I'll wipe it down a bit just so it's not so wet. And then I'll let that dry during the night. Here, we'll see how it goes. Alright, back to it. The lighting's a little scurvy today, but I think we are alright. Now, first thing first, I went online. I got, I wrote out what, where I'm going to put all these frets. And I use a 20 inch scale. Use, if you were going to make it a slightly different size instrument, or you, want, or you didn't cut it right, you need to make adjustments. That's one way to make an adjustment is just use a slightly different scale. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a yardstick here. And I'm going to take my can. Final adjustment for now. Park the yardstick up right up against the can's lid. Yeah, alright. Okay, now first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back across. Boom 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 boom. We're gonna find where that 20 inch mark is. And we're gonna remark it. That was our gonna be our actual zero fret. Right, we're going to take the can, we're going to orient the can however we want. You know, whatever part of the design we, we want. You know, the flip -flop. And, you know, mark the can about, eh, just, just mark it level across. Uh, this, this yardstick has to be about a quarter inch thick, so it will be fine. You might even just want to go a little bit above that. So, maybe we'll do that part first. So, we'll take, that down. take a nail. Okay, yeah, let's get this on the camera there. Okay, just a little nail. Okay, and then there's my mark. Hopefully now you can see that. Just right across there in pencil. Okay, and then just about the center of the can. Yeah, as precise as you wish to be. And we're gonna, we're gonna poke a hole with this. We're just gonna use this as a drill sort of. need a hole, oh, oh, I'm messing up here, large enough for the guitar string to go through, but not so large that the ball from the end of the guitar string get stuck. I happen to have multicolored guitar strings, I'll get used to this, huh? see, so there's, there's a nice red one on there, I, I, I think we'll use that for this one, so. Just to get a little ahead of ourselves, maybe, and prep the can. It doesn't matter so much the order of some stuff. Well, just remain, it's not going to be too critical here. Just bend it real quick. I still want to bend it back on itself. Okay. Maybe not so long. The thing about this is hard to break the string so much that you can't try it again. Just try a little bit. The idea is just push it down and get your inch or two inches or whatever put through back to that hole you have to put with the nail uh, and it's just push the rest of the string a little bit so it's a even part Oh, I'm gonna have to mute that. That was loud. You be careful with that. All right, so let's just set that aside. Now, remember we had remarked our our, our nut mark, and now I use. I said it was a 20 inch scale, but I use. I do it in metric. I actually mark the frets because 
rather than trying to mark off an eighteen in six in eighths or in sixteenths or thirty seconds of an inch, it's just easier to just mark it to a certain even whole millimeter. Now, so I do use I'm using a dulcimer tuning, so that's eight frets to an octave. And I'm just lining my stuff up. And you always measure from the nut. So if you lose track yourself, you go back to the nut. So going down the list here, we have a 55. 55 millimeter, 105 millimeter, 127 millimeters. Okay, slide around a little bit. 169. Two oh six, two twenty three, two thirty nine, two fifty four. Now that's a special one. That is actually fret number eight, which is one octave. That is that would be exactly ten inches if you were using the inch parts. Should be. What did I do wrong? Oh, I actually marked the wrong spot. That's what I get for that was half a centimeter off. There we go. Alright. Um, fret 9, 282. Fret 10, 306. 11 is 318. Alright, now we got 338. Three fifty-seven, not magnum. Well, magnum's not necessary. Uh -huh. Three sixty-five, three seventy-three, three eighty-one. This is dulcimer tuning. So this basically means you get, um, like you know, like do re mi fa sol la ti do a b c. You know, if you're just playing, if, if you tune the string to a C, you would get major C scale. Except you get a sharp, you can get access to a sharp sixth. It's just got that one extra in there. And it's it's kind of weird, but it's cool. So, so yeah, so you got a little accidental in there, but that's just standard oscillation dulcimer type tuning. So, fairly common. Okay, now I've marked. Okay, so now I just want to darken across and use a straight edge if, you, if you're so inclined. Uh, kind of going along with the flow here. But I just want to ex extend my marks across. And obviously the more precise you do it, if you if you can draw a perfectly straight line, that's more power to you. You know, if you need need a protract it out or whatever, that's that. Alright, so and these are just gonna be basic guidelines. I you'll see a sag. So so we have 16 frets, and then we have a mark for zero fret, which is our nut. Now remember, I started marking one that was wrong, so I should just double check myself. So I'm going to go a little bit of fret there. You know, so I'm going to mark up my instrument with unnecessary marks, especially if I'm going to file stuff. So. We're checking ourselves. Uh, 55, 105, 127. Okay, so double check that. 127, 127, 169. Okay, 206. Okay, we're on the money there. 223. 23, 239, 254. If you get these wrong, it's just the wrong note won't sound right. It's not the note you're looking for. Alright, so 239, 254. Aha, here we go. This bugger. I'm gonna just try to raise my mark. I should have made it in the first place. Okay, there we go. 
Watch or what? No. Where the fuck did the file go? All right, now we need the file directly across, right on those those measurements, those lines. Just a little, just a quick little mark. I don't want to go too deep. It's just picture hanging wire I'm using. Now you can go a little bit more. I'm a little crazy on the nut, I guess. So. Here. There. See? And then I already cut my fret wire. It's just, it's just picture hanging wire 16 gauge, I believe. So we take our little bit of fret wire and we're just gonna crazy glue it right there. Bam. Alright, so, so yeah, it's a little super glue there. Alright. I'm gonna stop in there and just do this. I cut these a little shorter than the width of the stick, just so they wouldn't stick out. So much or hurt somebody. Well, I just want to make sure that we're as flat as possible. You know, yeah, sometimes you have to, you know, before you glue them or after you glue them, you know, even just take a dead hammer or whatever you got handy and thwack them, flack them flat, thwack them flat. Or, you know, you can do the more normal, you know, luthier type treatment and file, file the high ones and. Maybe take out the low ones and shim them up a little bit, you know. Heck, if you're so inclined, you can go ahead and buy yourself some actual fret wire and use a slotting saw, a fret slot saw, and, you know, that, that might be faster, or better, or whatever for you. Uh, I didn't want to wait for those that stuff to mail for these. Super glue, CA glue all over my fingers, fingertips. I can't, I can't use the finger, fingerprint thing on my phone from the one I did earlier today. Well, since I already did up the blue one. I'll compare that when we're done. All right, let's move right along. Yes. Okay. So much, so much. Yes. I'm just gonna make sure these are. Well, before we move on, we want to make sure they're on. And that the glue is setting. The CA glue does not take long at all to set. So we're good. You know, flip it over the back. I am using semi-closed tuner. And the rule of these is you want the, these sorts of tuners, machines, you want the, the gear towards the bottom. So whichever side you're going to put it on, gear towards the bottom. Which is, which is why I drilled these looks almost looks like I drilled them on the wrong side but crank on top screw on bottom it's gotta go it's gotta go all right so these actually on the on the far side from from the enthusiast playing this thing the musician Canjoist? Is that a word? I guess it would be. Alright, and this, these come with little screws, so that, that will obviously, if you use whatever type of tuner you got handy, adjust the steps accordingly. As long as you can fasten the string, you make needed adjustments to its length and tension so you can tune it. Just like if you didn't want to, if you didn't have guitars, I have acoustic, these are acoustic guitar strings handy. If you have electric guitar strings, use them. You got bass strings, use them. You got unwound electrical, like bare electrical wire, yeah, try it. 
fishing wire, fishing line actually works rather well, um, especially anything above 20 pound test. Uh, I've used 50 pound myself. I would just go with 50 pound probably. Uh, for most, a regular guitar, the string tension on most of the strings is about, I'm going to say about 25 pounds. So, is the force needed. So you, you want to keep that in mind. You don't want the, the strings to break no matter how hard you pluck them or anything. Okay, now we're going to line up our can. Put a nice can here. And that's a nice in the back. So what I did earlier, when I touched the hole, I put the nutrition information on the back. So I'm going to put that towards the bottom now. And I'm going to grab some zip ties. The ones I have happen to just not be quite big enough to go all the way around a can like this. So, I used to combine two. And I, I, know, I know I can color coordinate up to this point, but I'm not concerned with the color of these zip ties. There's other ways to fasten these cans, of course. Um, certainly, you can try screw or bolt in from the bottom through the wood or you can tie them down with rope I guess or string twine something you just need to you just need to get it so that they don't twist and turn and fall off on you. And then I'll clip these as soon as I clip these as soon as I get this thing on. So but that, that's, that's this is just how I'm do I do these. Now the, first, the very first one I tried, I tried putting just screws in from the bottom, and the aluminum on the inside of the can, just, it'll just drop this stuff. So you might be going off with like a machine screw, and a nut on the inside, or, or a nut on one side or the other, just, just something. Through the can and it's secure. Okay, anyway, so I have that on there. Now I'm going to take it oh, for the moment of truth, so to speak. So my can's on there, I've got frets, got my string. I just take the string up to the tuner. And you want to make sure you go the right way with it so that the string goes around the tuner and it should want to be in the middle. That's where I put my hole. That's where I kind of want it. So I gotta figure out how I'm turning this so that it works. Okay, now, standard guitar scale is approximately 26 inches. So the string is obviously a lot longer than I need. So I'm just gonna pull a bunch through. So I'm not trying to twist this whole thing in one shot. Alright, there we go. We'll do that. Oh. I'm just put my finger on the nut on the, at the spring the string break basically. And there is a notch. I want it to go through the notch if I can, but it's more important to get the right tension. And if you drill it right in the can on the and other is right, it'll go through it. Okay, I think I need to back this off a little bit. I not put enough string. I put too much string through it. That's getting too, too tight too fast. I want a couple turns. It'll help hold the tension. And stay in tune as much as these things are sound in tune. So. Okay. All right. And do, 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 do. All right. So just working on it. Just nice spiral on the top of the tumor. I'm going to try to show you all that. Yeah, that kinked up there. Oh, I want that down. So I keep going underneath the part that circles around. That's the secret to it. Get a nice coil that twins the guitar string over the tumor. Okay, just repositioning that a little bit. Alright. I think we're Almost up to guitar tensions. And right now, I just want to. I'm 
just gonna twist it till it hits. That's what I like. Playing it open. Okay. I don't know what note that is. I'm not really too picky about it. So let's just try it out. Some fret buzz, but the notes sound more or less on key and stuff. You know, if you're gonna play in a group or ensemble or something, you might have to make your adjustments, but come on, this is play, have fun. For comparison, here's the one I made. I have, like I said, color coordinate string, so I use the blue string from the set. Kinda like that fret, but it adds a little something to it. And, of course, you can try to play it with a slide, too, you know, normally. So, that's it. Alright. Hope you all have fun. Barely see me. It's stupid light in the back. Alright. Well, have cheers.